And finally, we come to lab 11 for galvanic cells. So for galvanic cells, there's not a whole lot that you need to know other than how to use this uh, one equation. Uh, the equation is given, um, actually, I don't think it's given in the lab, it, it, but the equation is essentially given by E equals E0. And you will be given this on the practical uh, exam. It'll be in the back of the book. Okay, so E equals E0 minus 0 0.0257 over N times the LN of Q. Okay, and so basically all you really need to know is if we go back to our question, we are given the standard cell potential. So the standard cell potential is E0. So that's going to be 1.2. And then we go ahead and plug in these other numbers. So we've got minus 0 0.0257, and that's just a constant. Um, I would go into it, but you don't really need to know why, where it comes from for this uh, for this particular lab. Um, and so then you divide by n. And so n is the number of electrons being transferred. So this n is the number of electrons transferred. And we'll go over that in just a second. And then we have finally times the ln of q. And hopefully by now you guys know how to find q. Um, q is essentially just going to be products over reactants. And in order to figure out what exactly Q looks like, we're actually going to have to write out a balanced equation. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this formula since you'll be given it on the test. And let's go ahead and actually figure out what to do with these numbers. Um, so first we've got to write out a balanced equation for this. So we've got MO um, plus H, um, yeah, plus HG going to, and the HG is going to be the charged one. So you essentially go from the first two, for the first of each cell, so that's going to be 2 plus, and you go to the second of each cell, and so that is going to be our, what our products are. So our products are going to be um, MO, and we are given that this is 3 plus, and plus HG. So now we have to essentially balance out based on the number of electrons. So in order for this to balance out, 3 and 2 do not balance out because it's not a 1 to 1 ratio. So we're going to have to multiply this guy by 2 to get 6 because that's the number of electrons that would be transferred because it goes from 2 plus to a 3 plus and that's why I'm circling the 2 plus and 3 plus so you know where I got those numbers from and we're going to ha need 3 HG to start off with and so remember that the other ones are going to be solids so we don't really care about them in terms of our Q so when we put in our products over reactants we're going to get MO and what does this number 2 do? It makes it a power of 2 and so that's going to be then divided over the reactants which is going to be HG and what does that number 3 do? That makes it a cubed number. So obviously we will then plug in our concentrations which are given right here as 0.5 and 1.5. So we would plug those in and that would be how we solve our problem. The only thing we didn't really talk about is the number of electrons transferred but we did mention it up here. We circled it in yellow. So we had three electrons being transferred and we have two of those molecules so that's a total of six electrons and over here we've got three molecules and each one is gonna have a two charge difference so that's also going to be 6, so n is essentially going to be 6. We plug in 6 for n, and for our concentrations, we go ahead and plug in 0.5 for MO, and 1.5 for HG. Okay, so 
I would rewatch re that uh, a couple of times just to make sure that you really understand everything that's going on. And if you understand everything that we did here today, then you should be in really good shape for the final or for the practical exam. All right. Um, hopefully that helps, guys, and I will see you at the practical. Have a good one.